Nine years ago, Lisa fired up Ego Picks, and she is quickly becoming one of the top pick designers out there. Ego Picks, when it comes to customer service, it's job one in their book. When you order picks from Ego Picks, they work with you one on one to make sure you get exactly what you want. I can speak from experience on this. They do not and will not use pick design generators and no automatic checkouts. Everything they do is a one on one. By doing it this way, it becomes more of a personal experience. And let me tell you, Two in the Chest has ordered picks from a couple different companies, and the buck stops at Ego Picks. They kept working until I was 100% satisfied with my custom design. And to me, that is about as professional as it gets. And the price, wow, you can't beat it. When I ordered mine, there was no setup charge. And that, in most cases, is a deal breaker. Hey, we're musicians, we're not rich. Soon, they'll be customizing drumsticks too. So all you drummers out there, get ready for that. The fans love them guitar picks and drumsticks. Ego picks, when the best is all you'll accept. Ego picks, it's personal. You're listening to Dust Bowl Radio. Tune in each and every Thursday night from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the Dust Bowl Metal Show, hosted by the Reverend Black Jack McBride.
Hey all you Dust Bowl Metal Meat Bags, welcome to another edition of the Dust Bowl Metal Show, hosted by the Reverend Black Jack McBride, guitar player, singer for the world's only rustic outlaw southern hard rock and roll slash metal band, two in the chest, oh yeah, man, we've got a packed show, I um, went ahead and posted in the Dust Bowl Metal Show group page, what? You're not a member of the group? What the heck is the matter with you? Get on over to Facebook and join that group, man. Don't you want to be a part of the best metal family in the United States? Arizona Metal, baby. If you're not part of the family, you're an outcast. Come on, join the family. We are one big, awesome group of metalheads supporting one another left and right. Man, you do not want to be an outsider. Come on. Just join the group. I mean, we got ThatMetalStation.com. We've got all kinds of production companies involved in the Dust Bowl Metal Show. You know, and Pauling Events. Um, Freaking Immortalized Productions, Q Productions. Uh, I can go on. Uh, Band Oasis is on there. Uh, who else is on there? Uh, Big Daddy Vape. We've got uh, all kinds of awesome people on there. Soundphoria, Velocity Mechanical. You know, I mean, become part of the metal family. You don't want to be an outcast. Come on. Also, like I keep saying to you people, if you want your flyer on the front page of the Dust Bowl Metal Show, all you have to do is put DustBowlMetalShow.com on there, and you're set. You're in like Flynn, man. You're in. Just put DustBowlMetalShow.com on there, and you're set. And it's easy peasy, man. And if not, you'll go on the local shows page, which is cool, too. I mean, it's uh, either way you look at it, if you send me the flyer, I will get it on there, man. I'm all about supporting local metal 100%. You guys know that by now. You know I'm not some kind of freaking flake. Well, I am flaky. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, we got a lot of cool things to talk about today, so do not hesitate to tell all your homeboys and girls to log in here and check out this show today. We're going to get fired up right away with... The top 10 for December. That's right, meat bags. You're like, what? What's he going to do today? What's he... Come on, what do I do every dog on Thursday? That's right, meat bags. Top 10 get played right off the top of the show because they earned it. They got all their fans to come in and vote for them, and that's what it's all about. Getting your fans involved in your band or brand, depending on how you want to look at it. So... Stop skewering around and get in there and knock it out. You know what I'm saying? We're also going to have a phone call coming in uh, in the 7 o'clock hour by none other than Jake Ryan from Lethal Injection. So right about 7 o'clock, we'll be talking to him. And also... In the air raid hour, by request, meat bags, by request, we're going to play the two in the chest, brand new record, Iron Smoke and Spit. So if you haven't heard it yet, you want to stick around and check that out. And uh, also, like I said, we got tons of information I'm going to be giving to you. So don't go anywhere, okay? Oh my gosh, this is a freaking busy show. What do I say every weekend? This is a packed show. You got that right. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, you metal meat bags, we are going to play from 1 to 10. We're going straight up. So right off the bat, we're going to hit you with number one. And who is that? Well, you betcha. It's Iron Kill. And I also have a message that I need to get out to you guys. There are several awesome bands out there looking for musicians. If you are a drummer, you are a commodity in need, for sure. We got St. Madness, I believe, not sure, is still looking for a drummer. Almonthoth is looking for a drummer. 
Malicious Melodies is looking for a drummer. Iron Kill is looking for a singer and possibly, not too sure, but possibly a bass player. If you have not heard Iron Kill, you're going to hear them right now. They are a young bunch of guys that are just focused. Okay, they are ready to rock a tour right after they all get out of high school which is, I believe, this year. They all graduate. So if you're looking to get into a band that is ready to tour and you are a killer singer, get a hold of me, or you can just type in Iron Kill, all one word. I believe it's Iron Kill Band, I think. I'm not sure. Um, But it's all one word, Iron Kill. Get a hold of them. They need a killer singer without an attitude. And they also need possibly a killer bass player. These guys are ready to rock and roll. All right. And so was Malicious Melodies. These guys have been rocking it forward. Okay. And all of a sudden their drummer can't do it anymore. He had some kind of family issues or something. So let's get that freaking awesome hard rock and roll party band back on the tracks. Get, get a hold of Malicious Melodies if you want to do some killer drumming. For a bunch of amazingly awesome guys. Love them all. And again, St. Madness, like I said, I believe is still looking for a drummer. And Almanthoth is looking for a drummer. Though That is one off the wall, definitely different killer metal band. You want to check those guys out. Uh, if there's any more, I think there's other bands looking for members too. But if you're a musician, dude, there's no excuse in not joining a killer project that's already rocking and rolling all right and again malicious melodies has got shows on the books and so does iron kill so get a hold of those guys or get a hold of me and i'll get you in touch with them so without further ado number one for december iron kill with their tune one of my favorites it's the, one of the slower ones that they have it's kind of a uh, kind of sabbathy ish And I absolutely love this tune. Absolutely love this tune. It's called As Angels Burn by Iron Kill.
We'll be playing another track from those guys a little bit later, so if you want to hear some more of their stuff, you definitely want to keep tuned in, so to speak. Uh, they have some faster stuff, and it's uh, I've, I've got their whole record. I believe they're actually getting ready to record another one, too. I'm not completely sure. There's a lot of bands doing recording. We got Fatal Malady that's in the uh, studio as well. Uh, let's see here. God, who else is in there? Sick Monic, I believe, is in there. No, I think they just released theirs. I'm not sure. I think Singularity is done with their EP as well. Um, Malicious Melodies will be releasing theirs soon, hopefully. I got the chance to heard, hear some of the tracks. They haven't released them yet, so I can't show them to you. But I'll tell you what, they sound pretty damn good. And I wouldn't expect anything less coming out of Steampunk Audio Labs. I'll tell you that right now. Also, if you want a place to practice and you're in the East Valley, and you're like, oh, man, why do the damn neighbors keep calling on me? Man, this sucks. Just get a hold of James over there at, at Band Oasis and let him know what the Dust Bowl Metal Show sent you. He'll save you $5 an hour off the hourly rated rooms. And uh, if you're lucky enough to get a monthly rated room, you'll save 50 bucks a month just by mentioning the Dust Bowl Metal Show. So... Do not hesitate. Oh, and for all you meat bags that like them custom guitar picks, yes, there's a plethora of them out there. But I'll tell you what, ego picks, that's where you need to go. You're not going to get a better price, and you're not going to get a better quality. She is amazing. She's out of Canada, and she hooks up two in the chest like you would not believe. Man, and in just in the last four shows, I think we've given out over a hundred picks. So yeah, we need picks. So get a hold of Ego Picks and uh, let them know that the Dust Bowl Metal Show sent you. They'll give you a killer deal. No lie. Personal, personal deal. In fact, I have to play that right now. So check out. Nine years ago, Lisa fired up Ego Picks, and she is quickly becoming one of the top pick designers out there. Ego Picks, when it comes to customer service, it's job one in their book. When you order picks from Ego Picks, they work with you one on one to make sure you get exactly what you want. I can speak from experience on this. They do not and will not use pick design generators and no automatic checkouts. Everything they do is a one on one. By doing it this way, it becomes more of a personal experience. And let me tell you, Two in the Chest has ordered picks from a couple different companies, and the buck stops at Ego Picks. They kept working until I was 100% satisfied with my custom design, and to me, that is about as professional as it gets. And the price? Wow. You can't beat it. When I ordered mine, there was no setup charge, and that, in most cases, is a deal breaker. Hey, we're musicians. We're not rich. Soon, they'll be customizing drumsticks, too. So all you drummers out there, get ready for that. The fans love them guitar picks and drumsticks. Ego Picks, when the best is all you'll accept. Ego Picks, it's personal. Oh, yeah. Definitely mean every word. Okay, next up is your number two for six months in a row. This is no bull crap. Sick Black Automatic has held the number two spot for six freaking months. Holy crapzilla. Anyway, without further ado, bleeding out by your number two, Sick Black Automatic. Rage, and I am bleeding. Yeah. 
that was Sick Black Automatic, your number two for six months in a row. With their tune bleeding out. Next up is a new band to the show. I, I think I first fired them up probably last week. I think it was or the week before. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs by them. It's a really cool band. I'm not sure where they're from. I think they're from San Carlos. Not too sure. Uh, then again, I could be wrong. I know there are a couple bands are from San Carlos. And also, I wanted to let you guys know, there's some people in there posting uh, some requests for, you know, for some music. Although I do have about 180 or so, 190 bands, 160 of them are playable. Others, uh, I I won't play it only because the quality is not there and it's only going to make the band look bad. And that's the last damn thing you want is bad press. First impressions are not the best. But as far as requests go, I see one, and it says, Exiled Martyr. Well, I would love to play their their music, but I don't have any. So you might want to get a hold of them and tell them to send me some music, okay? And that goes for any Arizona metal band or metal band from the U.S. or beyond. If you want me to play your stuff, you're going to have to send it to me. That's just the way it is. So there it is. I'd love to play them, too. I absolutely love those guys. <laughs> so anyway, without any more wasted words, we're going to be playing Tribal Kills, your number three on the Dust Bowl Metal Show with their tune, Cookie.
Number three, Travel Kills with their tune, Cookie. Freaking love it. Cookie. Oreo. <laughs> anyway, next up is a band actually looking for a drummer. Okay. Uh, so if you want to get in one of the funnest bands that you could ever get into, you definitely want to get a hold of Malicious Melodies. These guys are awesome. <laughs> I freaking love these guys. And uh, anyway... Get a hold of them if you're looking for a drumming position in a very fun band. Their music is really cool. I can't wait to get the other stuff. Again, like I said, I got a chance to listen to a little bit of it. But I can't show it to you because that's just against the rules. (laughs) Not until I get the okay. So, there you have it. There it is. This is one of their songs. They are your number four for December. And it's a tune called Persistence. By Malicious Melodies.
Melodies, your number four on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10 for December. Also, you need to join the group so you can pick which 20 bands are added to the 10 that are brought over. See, the top 10 stay in the top 10. They just get moved over for the voting. Okay? So, if you have a Arizona band that you hear on the show or, you know, chances are I have it. I don't have all of them, but chances are I may have the one that you like. So get on that group, and I made a post in there that says, you know, put in your favorite band. So I need 20, excuse me, I need 20 more bands to add to the 10 that were brought over for the top 10 in January. So uh, you can either help me or I'll just pick them at random. That's just what I do. So, all right. Get them over there, and let's get some votes going for January. And uh, there you have it, and there it is. Your number five on the Dust Bowl Metal Show top ten for December is none other than the almighty Sick Monarch. Oh, I just have to say it like that. Sick Monarch. Raw. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they played the... Uh, the Desert Frost over it, man, they sounded really freaking awesome. <laughs> I know there are some people that actually want to forget that show, namely our homie Rich. <laughs> Sorry, bud, you're not going to live that down for a long time. But you know what? You entertain the crowd with your slothiness. <laughs> I ain't never seen somebody so freaking drunk in my life. But he said he's ready to redeem himself in January. So look for a pelvic meatloaf show coming up here shortly. Um, you do not want to miss it because when they are on their game, they are on their game. So, but anyway, <laughs> we're going to move right along with your number five on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10 for December. Sick Monic with. Feed my psychosis! <laughs>
right, that was your number five on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10 for December. Sick Monic with Feed My Psychosis. Next up, they were actually number one for two months in a row. Then they went in the studio and were unable to spend the time on getting their fans over for voting. So they dropped down to number two. And when they started doing all their CD release and stuff like that, they dropped down to number six. But that's okay. They are still number one in the Dust Bowl Metal Show family. Empire of Desire. You're number six on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top Ten. Six on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10 for December. Your number seven will be played in the Air Raid Hour by request. So this is the first track off the CD, so you're going to hear it again a little bit later. This is Dog from Two in the Chest. Check it out. (laughs) 
Number seven, two in the chest. Your number eight. I am still waiting for them to finish their dog on record. I'm dying here. I gotta hear this new stuff. Fatal Malady with Human Animal. This is one of my daughter's favorite songs off the current record. So that's the song that we play because she's the Dust Bowl Metal Show Princess. That's right. Get it right, folks. Fatal Malady, your number eight on the Dust Bowl Metal Show, top ten. Oh 
Music to me, guys. I want the new record, damn it. <laughs> Next up is your number nine on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10. They've been in the top 10 for probably five, six weeks as well. Absolute adversary with hand crushed esophagus.
right, that was your number nine on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10 for December. That was Absolute Adversary, you metal meatbags. Hand crushed esophagus. Oh, yeah, baby. Your number 10. Their last, but definitely not least. There's no doubt about that. These guys are brutal, and I freaking love them. A toll with their tune. Welcome to hell. Hey, all you Dust Bowl metal meat bags. Sorry about that. We just got a phone call here. Um, that was your 10th. Well, that was your number 10 on the Dust Bowl Metal Show Top 10 for December. A toll. So stick around for this right here. Uh, it's something that's going on here in the next couple of months. So check it out, and I'll get right back to you here in a second. This is a story of a mother, a father, their eight year old daughter. Okay, I'm dropping it all and going out on tour to spread autism awareness across the entire U.S. and the world. Many people have jumped on board this train to awareness, and for that we are extremely thankful. A reality show for all musicians to truly see what it's like to be on a four-month tour 
with not only their band, but another one as well. There will be ins and outs of the tour, as well as ups and downs. Happy times, and I'm sure there will be sad ones too. Many things can happen along the way. We just hope that there are not too many downs, but you will have to tune in to see them. The story really starts back in 2007. Rich and Rachel met back in 2007, oddly enough, at a place called Club Red during Metal Fest 2007. Neither one of them knew the other played an instrument, but a month later, when it was known to them this was the case, a band was formed. One thing led to another, and they ended up having a beautiful set of twins. This is where the story gets a bit sad. Raiden, the little boy, was a healthy boy until about his 12-month shots. At this point, he was gone. No emotions at all. They did not know what was going on. After a few more months went by and the little girl Samara was surpassing him on all achievements by almost a year, they took the online autism test and little Ray Ray hit the mark on 90% of all the questions. He has autism. Rich and Rachel put the band on hold to care for him as well as they knew how. When they took him in for his four-year shots, he started becoming very violent and destructive. At this point, someone heard all the screaming from Ray Ray at the home and called CPS on them. And believe it or not, it was a good thing. They ended up receiving all available services and this enabled them to get the band going for a whole new reason. This was the beginning of the Until All the Pieces Fit Autism Awareness Group, otherwise known as Two in the Chest. The concept of the band was the brainchild of Rich. He was working on this concept for several years before he ever met Rachel. But now they had a real reason to put on all that stage gear and sweat more than any other band could even imagine. But when you have a goal of spreading autism awareness worldwide, Being a little uncomfortable is the least they can do. In comparison to the pain their son goes through each and every day, what they wear doesn't even come remotely close to the pain that their son goes through. The band really started rolling in 2010, when the kids were only two. But after their son got even worse than he was, they put it in high gear and have been performing shows all over Arizona, bringing smiles to everyone's face that attends their performances. They have gained many fans in Arizona, but it's just not enough for them. They decided it was time to make the dream happen. Not a dream most would think, though. You see, Rich is not only the singer-guitar player of Two in the Chest, he is also the DJ of the Arizona Dust Bowl Metal Show. He made another goal during this the goal of bringing Arizona hard rock and metal bands together to work as one unit and to build the scene back up from a crumbling mess. This part of the dream is coming together, but not until almost four years of doing the show did anyone even notice what he was doing. He believes in the local scene immensely, and seeing the camaraderie that has come to the scene over the last year has sparked even more interest in him to spread the music scene worldwide as well. Many other people are joining in now to help in the rebuilding of the scene, and it has made Rich a very happy man. With entities such as Sofa Kings Radio, ThatMetalStation.com, and Gavin and Joe with Soundphoria.com, with everyone working so hard in the valley, Rich seen an opportunity to do something very different. At this point, he went to his wife Rachel, and after a month of conversations, they decided it was time to pull the triggers, so to speak, and drop everything they have here in Arizona and go out on a U.S. tour to spread autism awareness and Arizona metal throughout the entire U.S. And this is where you guys come in. The tour that is planned will on the first leg take him to 37 states and up to 90 performances. What they need to make this a reality 
is a reliable motorhome of some kind. We know there are thousands of amazing people out there that park their motorhome in storage lots and it just sits there not being used. Or if enough love financially is sent, they would be able to buy a used school bus and convert it themselves into a tour bus. On this tour to help Rich, Rachel, and Samara are some amazing people. The band Brace for Impact, a photographer and videographer named Ray, an amazing hard-working young lady named Rhonda, who also happens to be the manager of Two in the Chest, a young man named Carter, who just jumped on this tour without a second thought to be a part of this amazing dream. And last, but definitely not least, Mr. and Mrs. Lindley Partridge. Lindley is the lead guitar player, and the amazing Tanya is the seamstress and merch person. There are 13 people on this tour. That is a lot of mouths to feed, as well as hotel rooms if we do not have some kind of tour bus. Buses and motorhomes, at most, get maybe 12 miles to the gallon. The tour will take these amazing 13 people over 18,500 miles in a four-month period. So just to get started, we're sending out a request for a dollar a mile from all the family and friends of everyone on this amazing team. The gas alone will be in the neighborhood of $4,500 for the four-month tour. The food for 13 people if they eat light, will be about $15 a person per day. That is $195 a day for food. That's $23,400. Now remember, a good portion of the venues will be giving us guarantees, we hope, and this will ease the amount needed to survive on the road. We believe wholeheartedly in this dream of spreading autism awareness to the world. And we hope you do too. Will you be a part of this reality show that will be filmed each and every day of the tour? Never forget the catchphrase. Peace, love, and two in the chest. All right, you metal meat bags. How you doing tonight? We have a killer guest. On the Dust Bowl Metal Show phones, man. So who do we got on the phones right now? This is the Rascal from Lethal Injection. Lethal Injection. We also got Rhonda, the uh, coordinator. Yeah. The, the Rhonda, the coordinator of all the interviews for the Dust Bowl Metal Show, and the manager of Two in the Chest. Thanks a lot for getting this set up, man. Uh, I have yeah. not had a chance to see you guys play yet, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get over there this weekend. There's so many shows going on this weekend and everybody wants me to be at their show. So, I mean, it's, it's tough, but I think Rhonda is pretty much pushing me towards that one. <laughs> so I might end up making. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to be there for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So basically, um, you're from Lethal Injection, okay? And how long have you guys been together? Uh, our very first show was January eighth of this year, so we're we're not even a year in yet. Right, but I'm assuming that all you guys come from several different types of bands and stuff like that, right? <clears throat> Correct. Yes, we uh, we definitely all come from different backgrounds and. Uh, even different genres, uh, a lot of us, and different bands, for sure. Wow, it's gonna, I bet you it makes for one heck of a show, man. I'm actually eager to see it. I mean, you got you got that show coming up this weekend. Again, Who who's on that bill? Uh, so it, it'll be uh, Saturday at Club Red East, the, the big theater. It's uh, Lethal Injection, Fatal Malady, Artisan, The Beast and the Disciples, the world in my eyes. Her name echoes and order sixty six. Wow, that is a full freaking bill, man! What a killer show that's going to be. You guys need to get out to Club Red this weekend. Definitely check this out. Um, you, I, do you guys? Uh, are you in the studio right now or recording a new record or? 
Uh, yeah, we actually have seven songs uh, already complete for our sophomore album, which is called Judgment Night. We are looking to release the full-length album uh, either end of summer or early fall of 2017. And we just released our debut album, Sex, Money, Power, in July of 2016, and we're already seven songs deep on our second album so we're just we're, we're pushing the envelope we're staying extremely busy and uh you know perfecting our craft day by day and, and it's been a it's been an amazing ride and we're excited for everybody to hear the well, new stuff for well, sure absolutely i can't wait to get it man you uh you're going to be sending me over a single that you've released here real soon right <clears throat> correct yes the single's called no turning back It'll be available on all digital outlet platforms on December 30th. And uh, I'm definitely going to get it over to you this evening. And it'll be available to the public for purchase on Friday, Jan- or Friday, December 30th. Very cool. Yes, I am. As you get that to me, I will spin it tonight. And, uh, yeah, I actually can't wait to hear it. <laughs> so um, who, who all is in the band? Can I get some names? Absolutely, yeah. You've got me, Jacob Ryan, a.k.a. The Rascal. Uh, I'm one of the vocalists. I do the rapping in the band. Jonathan Russell is the lead vocalist. Lawrence McIntyre is guitar. Jesse Espich, guitar. Luis Rodriguez on bass. And James Ringstrom on drums. Very cool, very cool. So what uh, what kind of background do you have as far as being in bands or what styles of music are your favorites or... And that you've played? Well, this is actually my first uh, crossover record, I guess you could call it. Um, I- I've been a solo rapper for 15 years, and, you know, I grew up on all genres of music. I grew up on rock, metal, you know, rap, and, uh, you know, I started rapping at age 16. And, um, you know, I always had a passion to do live music rather than just rap, you know, and I tried to do this back in 2003 and uh, just couldn't get the band to actually commit. Obviously, it was different members back then. And, uh, you know, eventually I got lucky, ran into Jonathan Russell off of a Facebook post. Him and I linked up and went to the studio. We recorded one song and we, we built the band around us. So, you know, in all honesty, I, like I said, I come from all genres and backgrounds. Uh, you know, I like all music. You know, I listen to rock, metal, rap, country, you know, pop. I mean, if it's good music, I listen to it. And I'm influenced by all the different genres out there. Well, absolutely. Uh, you and I uh, hit the uh, hit the nail on the head on that same point. There's no doubt about it. Um, in fact, there's a few bands on here that I play that have that, uh, that crossover style. Um, one of them, I've, I, I can't even think of it right now. There's actually three. Yeah, three of them. I'm trying to think of uh, one of Arvin's Garden. I don't know if you ever heard of them or not. Uh, I have not. Arvin's Garden. Uh, there's another one called uh, Beyond Faded. And then there's another one. I can't remember the name of them. Doggone, it's really driving me nuts. But they're really... And, and that's what it is. They have they're like a metal hard rock metal, and they have a, uh, the rap influence in there as well. And it's really it's actually a cool style. It's you know you want to here. I'm going to give you something really honest here. Okay, back in the day, uh, I'm, we're talking the day. I'm an old fart. Okay, and <laughs> back in the day, back and we're talking late '80s, early '90s. I always wanted to do a band like that, like a rap metal band, you know, kind of like uh, Faith No More, but with more rap and stuff like that. And 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 I've always wanted to do that, and I, I could never find anybody that would want to do that, you know. And But it's kind of cool actually hearing it now. And and I think uh, Rage Against the Machine kind of stepped up on it, uh, one of the first bands. And uh, another band, Biohazard. You know, I know you heard of them. Oh, yeah. We actually get compared to Biohazard uh, a lot, believe it or not. Well, that is a good thing. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, because I freaking love Biohazard. So, basically, you have a show this weekend. Do you got any other shows, or you just want to stick with this one right now? Uh, yeah, we. I mean, we have some dates coming up in January. Um, we had played the, 
the big festival out here uh, for the radio station, the KFMA Fall Ball Festival with Weezer and Panic at the Disco and uh, Iration and the Struts. We played that festival back in October, and we basically just agreed that we were going to take ourselves off the books for a while so we could just focus on, you know, the holidays and also focus on writing new music. So, yeah, we've got the show this Saturday. Then we have a, uh, a show that we're headlining in Tucson at the event on January 21st, and we're playing with uh, Power Man 5000 and Orgy on January 24th, and then we have two dates, uh, January 27th and 28th in Texas, and then right now we're actually booking uh, a tour from March until April where we'll be going all across the West Coast and, you know, up the coast a little bit, so. Wow, that's that's pretty awesome, dude. Yeah, we're uh, we're actually doing the same thing. We're, we're doing a four-month tour. But we're starting down through Texas, up around the coast that way, through to Florida and up through New York and up around the edge. We're doing a full, full freaking tour. It's going to kill us, but <laughs> we're going to do it. So, you, I, you, yeah, so you're heading months, in. That's, that's a long run. Oh, dude, it is huge. It is huge. And it, we're just going to do it and get it over with. And, and then we're going to cruise into Canada. Have you thought about cruising into Canada? or? Yeah. Actually, uh, it's funny you say that. I just talked to our booking agent about it because he's doing our routing right now as we speak. And, uh, you know, he's got a couple offers for us already up in uh, Washington. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, you know, Canada's six and a half hour drive. I think we should put four dates on our run in Canada. Well, and uh, he's actually looking into it. So, yeah, that's it's a, it's a possibility. I don't know how realistic it's going to happen um, on this run, but... I mean, we would definitely love to see it happen, and, and our goal is to definitely get into Canada, Mexico, and uh, other countries as fast as possible, especially with the type of music we do. It's uh, it's very big in a lot of those countries. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man, and you definitely want to you, you wanna jump on it, you know, as fast as you can and, and ride hard and, and heavy and straight, man, into it. And if you don't, then, you know, you just, like, miss the mark. So, I mean, this day and age, if you don't stay on top of it and keep your band up in the forefront, um, you get lost in the cracks. I mean, I'm sure you can agree with that. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, like I said, we're a brand-new band, and, you know, for everything that we've done, I mean, you know, we're, we're blown away at the, you know, the, the success we've had. You know, a lot of, lot, you, you know, a lot of new bands... I mean, they, they have to, you know, play the worst of worst shows, you know, take what they get for, you know, the first year, two, even three years of their career. Right. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate and we haven't had to do that. We've played, you know, the Rialto Theater. We've played, you know, like I said, the Fall Ball Festival. We played South by Southwest in Texas. You know, we played at the Marquee Theater. You know, we've played, uh, we've played a ton of great shows, big shows, and... You know, we, we've had great success with our, our first album. You know, we charted uh, all the way up to number four on iTunes. We were number one on Amazon uh, for two weeks for alternative metal. And, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of views on our videos. So we're we're very blessed. And you're right. If, if, you, if you let the ball drop, that's exactly what happens. The ball drops, you get shuffled to the side, and you're no longer relevant. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a what can you do for me now business, unfortunately. Well, yeah, it is, you know, and the fans, you know, they, they, they want to support you, but they got to have stuff. And, and what you're doing right now, working on a brand new record a year later, that's the way to do it. If, if you're not, if you're not working 100% trying to give uh, your fans, if you're touring the record, that is, um, give your fans at least a record a year. I mean, they're just going to find something else to listen to. You're right. Absolutely. You know? I agree with you on that a hundred percent. And that's uh you know, it, the market has changed. The industry has changed. It's a lot easier to make things happen as an independent artist now than it's ever been. And, you know, you're right. It's, it's all about the grind. It's all about networking. And it's all about staying, you know, relevant and in the people's eye at all times, whether it's new merchandise, a new video, a new single, a new album, new shows, a tour. You know, that, that shows that you're extremely active and you're serious about what you're doing and you're trying to, grow and give to the fans and, and they like that. They like that up close and personal and they respect the grind and it you know it works out a lot better that way. 
Oh, absolutely, man. If you're not willing to, you know, get down and dirty and, and uh, fight the good fight, you know, for your brand, then what's the point, you know? Yep. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, I'm uh, actually really excited. So that show is this Saturday. So you say you're going to get tickets, Rhonda? Yes, definitely. Oh, cool. Did you have any questions for this homeboy? Yeah, um, a few, actually. Um, now I see that you guys had released your uh, very first music video, um, Voices, correct? Yes. Okay, and that was um, what, back in January? Yep, January of this year. Okay, um, and that was your your very first first um, video, correct? Correct. Okay, yeah, and then I had also noticed that, um, like, going back to like the starting of the band, that um, that you had approached Jonathan and um, had come up with this concept um, that's never you know before been seen or done in Tucson. Would you like to tell us about that or? Yeah, uh, you know, Jonathan, it's it's actually kind of a, a weird but funny story. Uh, back in the early 2000s, Jonathan was in a band called Blind. And I was a solo artist by The Rascal, which I still go by. And uh, my manager back then, Andy, him and I came up with a concept. We called it War of the Worlds. And what we would do is we would book Metal Axe, with rap acts and Jonathan and I knew each other way back then. We actually did some shows together outside of Tucson even, uh, with the same concept. And, you know, over the years he kind of went his way. I went my way, you know, I became a family man and, uh, you know, I actually took a break from music for a while, but I put a post on Facebook and I asked, you know, all my friends, followers and family, you know, if you'd like to see me collab with somebody, who would it be? And a buddy of mine, Chris, tagged Jonathan Russell, and I messaged John, and I said, hey, if you're interested, man, I'd love to sit down and talk to you. And it kind of fell off, you know, in all honesty, nothing happened. We didn't even talk for like three months. And then I messaged him again, and I said, look, I'm serious about this. If you're not serious about it, let me know, and, uh, you know, I'll move on. And then he's like, no, I want to do it. And basically what we did is we booked a recording session with Matt Good from, he's, uh, from the band From First to Last, and we created a song, Strength Through Strongle, and, you know, basically, Matt made the music, because obviously it was just a Jonathan Russell rascal thing. We uh, wrote all the lyrics, came up with the concept of the song, and we dropped it. And basically, we knew right then and there that we had something very special, and that we had, you know, the energy we needed together, we had the focus, we had, you know, the chemistry, everything was there, and built the band around us. And if you... You know, if you look at that first video, Rhonda, which is crazy, if you watch Voices, uh, four of the members that you see in that video are no longer in the band. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I never noticed that. Well, watch it again. You'd be like, oh, my God, he is right. That's not their bassist. That's not their drummer. And neither one of those guitarists are in the band anymore. We got we cleaned house, you know, just... They, they weren't serious about it like we were. And... uh you know, they're young, and, you know, they, they had other visions, so we just replaced them, and, you know, we, we have the dream team now, and we're, we're we're blown away at how well we all work together and the chemistry that we have. Yeah. And now that you have mixed the, um, what is it, like the, um, I'm sorry, I'm, like, stuttering over here, um, like hip-hop with metal, right? Yes. Okay. Aggressive metal tones and rhymes. <laughs> that is right. Yeah, it's like over, uh, you know, the chant, da -da 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 -da, and you know that's the parts that are heavier. That's what's crazy is I rap on the heavier parts where people would expect Jonathan to sing, and you know that's another. You know, another thing we pride ourselves on our arrangements. You know, we try to make it to where our listeners never know what's going to happen when they hear a new song. You know what I mean? They don't know where I'm going to be where Jonathan's going to be, if, even if I'm going to scream. You know, i got some hidden things on this new record that people people are going to be pretty excited about. You know, I've definitely grown as an artist with Jonathan and this band. And, you know, it, you, guys, you guys, when you hear the song I send you, you understand. It's, 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 
it's different. You know, we we keep we keep our fans wanting more because they never know what to expect from us. Well, you got me chomping at the bit. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Oh, absolutely, man, absolutely. <clears throat> oh man, is there is there anything else that you'd like to tell your fans out there, man? Uh, just basically, you know how grateful we are. You know, we're we're very humbled by you know people following us you know people supporting us coming to the shows you know supporting buying merchandise or albums or even just you know a like on facebook or a share on instagram or a view on youtube we're just extremely grateful and very thankful for everybody that supports our movement and you know i just can't thank everybody enough that's awesome that's awesome any last words there Rhonda? um yeah just um Thing I like to um, ask everyone is, um, what do you do to prepare for your shows? Honestly, nothing. I it's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to come off like cocky or I'm just extremely confident in what I do, and I just get there. And you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I get nerves every show before I get to the shows because. Show day is so stressful. You know, you got to load in. You know, they they basically tell you hurry up and get here early to wait. And I hate that part of it. But the minute I step foot in any venue or on any stage at a festival, whatever we're doing, it's just automatic to me. It's like riding a bike. It's just something I have extreme passion for, extreme love for, and I, I honestly have no patience, uh, no preparations, no rituals. I'll tell you what I got. All right, I'll tell. I'm going to tell you mine. I don't like I doing a squat. I don't like doing a damn thing on show day. <laughs> don't ask me right. to go to the store. Don't ask me to do nothing because I want to stay focused. And my reason is, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, is you want to make sure that you give the listener or the viewer, as it were, a 100% perfect show every time. That's what you want to do. That's what you strive right. for. That's what I strive for. And I know you can agree with that. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, you know, I have no, you know, no preparation, no rituals. I just, I, like you said, and Rhonda can verify. She's been, uh, she's been to our events before. You know, we, we may even if you're there for, you know, another artist or another band, whatever. You know, we leave a lasting impression. We're a band that people don't forget. You may not like it, you know, because we know that everybody, right. But we, we definitely leave some type of memory when you leave going home of who Lethal Injection is. and We leave our hearts on the stage 100% of the time. That's the way you got to do it, man. You got to do it. You got to throw the... You gotta throw the far the hard ball or the fastball. You gotta you gotta nail it down, man. And you guys do that apparently. Otherwise, Rhonda wouldn't have had set this up. So, <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad you called in. I really appreciate it, man. It's it's been actually uh, awesome to talk to you. And and I don't know, Rhonda, if you got a couple extra bucks, maybe I'll go with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be wonderful. I mean, they're full of energy. Um, I would have never been able to tell that. You got nervous, to be honest. You always look, you know, like you just have it all together when you get there and just so relaxed. And, oh, yeah. But, yeah, they're full, they're full of energy, and they get up there, and, I mean, they bring it, and they they you know, bring one heck of a crowd, and the crowd is just they're really into it as well. And it's a great show. I've always enjoyed every show I've been to of theirs. That's awesome. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, once we, once we hit the venue, like I said, it's go time. There's no more nerves. Now it's... Uh, it's about, you know, doing what I love, and that's that's the thing, you know, and I've always told myself, no matter how old I get, as long as I love what I do, I will continue to do it. The minute I don't love doing music anymore is the minute that I just hang it up, you know oh, what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. You just hit the nail on the head right there. I mean, <laughs> I'm 50 years old, and I'm going out on a tour, okay? So, yeah, the the love is there. I'm, I'm a Lemmy guy, dude. You know, Lemmy Kilmister, I mean... He played what was it? Twelve days before he died. I mean, <laughs> that guy. He yeah. lived. He lived and died doing what he loved, and that is right. That's that's you and me right there, buddy. So uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, I I probably already have a couple of tickets at the door. So um, if I can get the hell out of this house, you can uh, you can bet you'll see me there, man. That'd be great. We'd love to see you there. 
Awesome, dude. Thanks a lot for calling in. It's an awesome and uh, awesome interview, dude, man. He had a lot of awesome information. They have a killer record coming out here soon. They said in, in spring or summer of spring uh, of 2017. So you definitely want to be on top of that. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And uh, don't forget to send me that doggone single, man, because like I said, I want to play it. So we're this yeah. is Jake Ryan. Thank you so much for calling in. Lethal Injection. Check them out Saturday at Club Red East. Absolutely awesome stuff, guys. Thanks again, brother. Thanks for calling in. Hey, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. And uh, I will get you that single now. And, Rhonda, I will meet with you either tomorrow or Saturday, and uh, we'll get the ball rolling. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, you meet bags. That was Mr. Ryan there uh, from Lethal Injection. Man, you definitely want to check them out on Saturday. Sounds like it's going to be a killer show. Right now, we have the air raid hour, and this was by request. From America Hall. chest iron smoke and spit in its entirety kick back relax grab those bootstraps you metal meat bags and let's go for a ride with two in the chest
play cards, you big dummy. Now listen here, young man. If you don't watch your tone, you're gonna find yourself watching the grass grow from underneath the dirt. Now stop fiddle farting around with them cards and deal the hand. Seems a bad a shooting the tables a seven back, yeah. I'm out the door, I know the follow lose my life over a game of cards. Dealt the hand at one friend square with all the buds and everywhere, yeah. Then the book. 
Elvis out and flying everywhere, yeah. Kings of Projects. But disbelieve I jumped on my steed I ran like the wind The posse behind her to bring my end Yeah How can this be? I ask myself again Because I'm a run like hell I don't wanna die It's not my time For kings of rejects It's not a crime The bullets started flying everywhere, yeah Kings of Virgins Yeah
fun One was always fighting The other never did any harm When the Civil War started They both decided to go This decision would break the mother's heart Because she loved them both Shower spider from the crew. Man. 
watch me and he gun them down. He's the baddest man around. If you come to this town, you better put that iron down. Or you're gonna end up six feet under the ground.
Seems the bank was held up last week. And guide, you tie them up good this time. When I tie them, they stay tied. The end of his life was foretold. To save his life, he was given a plan. Call fate, luck, or a bag of gold. Better watch out for the hot night! It's a dog bad, just man walks. A point in position that no man wants. An every black mask will up over his head. You don't remember him when you're dead. In his hands, he holds your life. You'll never see your kids or your wife. Made that choice when you find that gun. Boy, it's boy. a day with the Iggy be so kai benajin ayo o ne do nihe da ele di sin na ha de kat.
the treaty. I will not sign. They lit a big horn in the black hills of mine. White man promises he does not keep. Continuous lies.
by two in the chest the title of it is iron smoke and spit by request thank you america the interview that we had tonight was actually really cool and he sent me over his uh one of his new tracks coming off the new record let me tell you something this is going to be a killer show with all those bands on that bill at Club Red. That's where you need to be. Okay? I'm going to do everything I can to be there because personally, this is some good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm going to play it right now. And then we're going to play something, uh, a, a new track from Twisted Theorem when they're brand new vocalists. Absolutely awesome stuff. And then the, the Warren... Fort Callan Ingram, I guess. A Celestial Throne is the name of the song. Uh, we'll be playing that. But right now is a tune by This Far. <clears throat> by This Far. It's a tune named This Far by the awesome Lethal Injection. Check this out. No time to waste, seize every moment Seems crazy, don't it? Your soul, you sold it with mine, I hold it Before you know it, you're the greatest going Got big wheels, I keep rolling over those potholes I'ma keep it going, no obstacle can stop me growing Most of them living that side clops That one I open before it closes Are you really knowing where you're going? Because right now, the proof is showing It's what you're making, it's how you mold it Life's like a trigger, it's fully loaded Gotta stay away, so it's duly noted Gotta stay through until it's fully coded I can't Future every day that pass, my life can still ride to it. Moving, my friends get fueled. That's the way it is for a constant move of self preservation. Never devastating, cause life is family. We stay relating. It's all location, there's no debating that I'm here to stay. That's merely wait. The world is fake, my impact is real. There's no seals like cold steel. I won't stand, I'm all lean. Gonna go hard, no cost swim. Go back to the wind with the devil's grin. Give great a glimpse. I'm on the fence, not trying to lose, trying to make a dip. You only live once, can't do it again. Come on.
Well, I told him I was chomping at the bit to hear it. I really like that tune. That's really freaking cool. Very well recorded. Uh, just absolutely awesome. I'm actually looking forward to checking them out Saturday night over at Club Red. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you got Fatal Malady on that bill, so you know I'm going to be there anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I yeah, it's awesome. Very cool stuff. Cannot wait to get the rest of the record. Definitely freaking killer damn that's killer stuff next up is a brand new track from our local homeboys twisted theorem with their brand new vocalist check it out guys it's called crossfire i believe am i right here i think so i'll find out right now yep from Twisted Theorem. Freaking awesome. <laughs> this one here, I don't know. I can't remember. I, I think it's Midnight Fire, but it might be a different band. But I believe the tune is called Celestial Throne. Uh, the way the metadata is on here, it's hard to understand. But check it out. Brand new track from these guys. Wow. 
This is a story of a mother, a father, their eight-year-old daughter dropping it all and going out on tour to spread autism awareness across the entire U.S. and the world. Many people have jumped on board this train to awareness, and for that we are extremely thankful. A reality show for all musicians to truly see what it's like to be on a four-month tour with not only their band, but another one as well. There will be ins and outs of the tour, as well as ups and downs, happy times, and I'm sure there will be sad ones too. Many things can happen along the way. We just hope that there are not too many downs, but you will have to tune in to see them. The story really starts back in 2007. Rich and Rachel met back in 2007, oddly enough, at a place called Club Red during Metal Fest 2007. Neither one of them knew the other played an instrument, but a month later, when it was known to them this was the case, a band was formed. 
One thing led to another and they ended up having a beautiful set of twins. This is where the story gets a bit sad. Raiden, the little boy, was a healthy boy until about his 12 month shots. At this point, he was gone. No emotions at all. They did not know what was going on. After a few more months went by and the little girl Samara was surpassing him on all achievements, by almost a year, they took the online autism test and little Ray Ray hit the mark on 90% of all the questions. He has autism. Rich and Rachel put the band on hold to care for him as well as they knew how. When they took him in for his four-year shots, he started becoming very violent and destructive. At this point, someone heard all the screaming from Ray Ray at the home and called CPS on them. And believe it or not, it was a good thing. They ended up receiving all available services and this enabled them to get the band down for a whole new reason. This was the beginning of the Until All the Pieces Fit Autism Awareness Group, otherwise known as Two in the Chest. The concept of the band was the brainchild of Rich. He was working on this concept for several years before he ever met Rachel. But now they had a real reason to put on all that stage gear and sweat more than any other band could even imagine. But when you have a goal of spreading autism awareness worldwide, being a little uncomfortable is the least they can do. In comparison to the pain their son goes through each and every day, what they wear doesn't even come remotely close to the pain that their son goes through. The band really started rolling in 2010 when the kids were only two, but after their son got even worse than he was, they put it in high gear and have been performing shows all over Arizona, bringing smiles to everyone's face that attends their performances. They have gained many fans in Arizona, but it's just not enough for them. They decided it was time to make the dream happen. Not a dream most would think though, you see, Rich is not only the singer-guitar player of Two in the Chest, he is also the DJ of the Arizona Dust Bowl Metal Show. He made another goal during this, the goal of bringing Arizona hard rock and metal bands together to work as one unit and to build the scene back up from a crumbling mess. This part of the dream is coming together, but not until almost four years of doing the show did anyone even notice what he was doing. He believes in the local scene immensely, and seeing the camaraderie that has come to the scene over the last year has sparked even more interest in him to spread the music scene worldwide as well. Many other people are joining in now to help in the rebuilding of the scene, and it has made Rich a very happy man. With entities such as Sofa Kings Radio, ThatMetalStation.com, and Gavin and Joe with Soundphoria.com. With everyone working so hard in the valley, Rich seen an opportunity to do something very different. At this point, he went to his wife Rachel, and after a month of conversations, they decided it was time to pull the triggers, so to speak, and drop everything they have here in Arizona and go out on a U.S. tour to spread autism awareness and Arizona Metal throughout the entire U.S. And this is where you guys come in. The tour that is planned will on the first leg take him to 37 states and up to 90 performances. What they need to make this a reality is a reliable motorhome of some kind. We know there are thousands of amazing people out there that park their motorhome in storage lots and it just sits there not being used. Or, if enough love financially is sent, they would be able to buy a used school bus and convert it themselves into a tour bus. On this tour to help Rich, Rachel, and Samara are some amazing people. The band Brace for Impact, a photographer and videographer named Ray, an amazing hard-working young lady named Rhonda, who also happens to be the manager of Two in the Chest. A young man named Carter, 
who just jumped on this tour without a second thought to be a part of this amazing dream. And last, but definitely not least, Mr. and Mrs. Lindley Partridge. Lindley is the lead guitar player, and the amazing Tanya is the seamstress and merch person. There are 13 people on this tour. That is a lot of mouths to feed, as well as hotel rooms if we do not have some kind of tour bus. Buses and motorhomes, at most, get maybe 12 miles to the gallon. The tour will take these amazing 13 people over 18,500 miles in a four-month period. So just to get started, we're sending out a request for a dollar a mile from all the family and friends of everyone on this amazing team. The gas alone will be in the neighborhood of $4,500 for the four-month tour. The food for 13 people if they eat light, will be about $15 a person per day. That is $195 a day for food. That's $23,400. Now remember, a good portion of the venues will be giving us guarantees, we hope, and this will ease the amount needed to survive on the road. We believe wholeheartedly in this dream of spreading autism awareness to the world. And we hope you do too. Will you be a part of this reality show that will be filmed each and every day of the tour? Never forget the catchphrase. Peace, love, and two in the chest. Oh 
Like I said before, Iron Kill is looking for a vocalist, possibly a bass guitar player. This is another track by them. It's a tune called Punish the Enemy by Iron Kill. You can check them out on Facebook. Iron Kill, one word. I believe it's called Iron Kill Band. I'm not sure. I'll check it out for you. Punish the Enemy by Iron Kill.
that was Iron Kill. Like I said, there's a couple of bands out there looking for musicians, you musicians, your drummers, basically. Almanthoth looking for a drummer. Malicious Melodies looking for a drummer. Iron Kill looking for a vocalist and possibly a bass player. You can get a hold of all those bands on Facebook. Malicious Melodies, Iron Kill, Almanthoth. That's A M U Almond. Almun. I think it's A-M-U-N Almun and then T-H-O-T-H or something like that. Almun Thoth. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for joining me on the Dust Bowl Metal Show. I do want to bring to your attention that this show will go back to only Thursdays at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. On the 21st, I believe, will be the last day. No, the 20th. It says right here. So uh, the 19th will be the last day. So the 19th will be the last day for the 24-hour program. Uh, it's $120 a month for the licensing and everything to run 24 hours. I do not have the money to do that. Um, this show has been 24 hours for one reason, and that's because the bass player of Expansion Theory has been paying for it for the last six months. So... Thank you so much, Steve Lee. You're an awesome guy. I'm not going to ask you for another penny. Uh, if you guys want to keep this show online 24 hours a day continually, you'll have to pitch in to do it. I mean, I've got several listeners. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of listeners. So, you guys put in a buck, five bucks or something. Just keep the Excuse me, keep the radio show on for 24 hours. Or we'll just go back to one day a week for three hours, which I don't have a problem with. I can afford that. It's only 20 bucks, you know. <clears throat> and uh, we still got a good six months left on what you guys kicked in before to make it. So we'll be good with the three hours on Thursdays. So anyways, um like I said, if you want to pitch in and, and help keep the Dust Bowl Metal Show on for 24 hours, all you got to do is click the tab there on DustBowlMetalShow.com on the front page. It says Donate. Uh, donate what you can. Keep us rolling. This is all about you guys. This is your radio station. And remember, Two in the Chest and Brace for Impact are going on a four-month tour of upwards around 90 dates. In those 90 dates, we'll be spinning and promoting Arizona Metal and picking up other bands along the way. So, think about that. God bless you guys. We'll see you next Thursday. Uh, make sure you tune in on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. for Metal Max from Texas. Giving you some awesome music, not only from Arizona, but from Texas as well. So, we'll talk to you guys later. Until then... Kick up the dust in the Dust Bowl. You're listening to the Dust Bowl Metal Show. I'm the Reverend Black Jack McBride, and we will talk to you next Thursday. Later.